Hello everybody, I am Ponage Pie, and what the hell are you wearing? Well, since this is our first movie review, I thought that I would dress appropriately. Okay, well, cool. Uh, what movie are we reviewing? The Jungle Book. Dude, that's awesome. I love that movie. <laughs> In case it wasn't obvious enough, we are reviewing the 2004 rendition of The Phantom of the Opera, which is arguably one of the best musical movies of all time. This movie amazingly met a budget of $70 million, just $5 million more than Food Fight, and drew in more than twice that amount. This movie was originally announced in 1989, but Lloyd Webber's divorce completely shot production of it. The cast featuring Emmy Rossum from uh, Dragon Ball Evolution, <coughs> Patrick Wilson from A-Team, and wonderful internet sensation Gerard Butler from 300. The movie starts out in Paris of 1919 at the Opera Populaire, which looks more like a courthouse than an opera house, where this old guy is purchasing a monkey music box. Will you still play when all the rest of us are dead? Why do you care? Not 666 then. Satan! Satan! It's Satan! It's Satan. Satan. I'm scared by a chandelier. So now the opera house goes into Technicolor, and we are shown various images of an average rehearsal. Oh, so that's what happens at Disney World. And here we have our average Prince Charming riding in on his white horses. I swear, she sounds like one of today's pop stars, but I, I just can't put my finger on who. You know, Carlota in this kind of sounds like a mixture of a French person and someone from Jersey Shore. My god, if I was a Roman and I saw that coming on the battlefield, I'd be horrified! Monsieur Richard Fermat and Monsieur Gilles André. I'm sure you've read of their recent fortune amassed in the junk business, scrap metal, actually. Team Fortress 2 in 1870. Makes a lot of sense. He was rich. Yes, because when I think of scrap metal, I think of this. And we are deeply honored to introduce our new patron, the Vicomte de Chagny. Apparently we find out that Christine and Raoul are childhood sweethearts. Oh, and apparently Raoul is really into saying things out of nowhere. My parents and I are honored to support all the arts, especially the world-renowned Opera Populaire. I mean, that that's kind of like walking into Burger King and being like, you know, I really like fast food, especially Burger King. For a Carlotta Giudicelli, <laughs> our leading soprano for five seasons now. Brava, brava. <laughs> Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh huh. I hope he is as excited by dancing girls as your new managers. Because I will not be singing. Andiamo tutti. No, it's finished. Finished. Get my doggy. Bring my doggy. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Oh yes, of course. We grovel. Everything can be solved with a good grovel. What the heck is a grovel? Oh, that's a grovel. Isn't there a rather marvelous aria for Elisa in Act 3 of Hannah? Oh, perhaps the senora. Yes, 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 ma no, because I have not my costume for actually, because somebody not finish it, and I ate my hat. I'm sorry, you, you what? You, you ate your hat. So they allow her to do her god-awful rendition of this opera song. I kind of wish it was the end of her singing once and for all. Right. Okay, for God's sake, man, what's going on up there? Please, monsieur, don't look at me. 
Scott's my judge. I wasn't at my post. Well, that's an easy way to get fired. Seriously, that's like getting pulled over by the police for reckless driving and saying, Uh, sorry, dude. I, I, I was high, you know. These things do happen. I didn't stop these things from happening. This thing does not happen. Oh, no. Andiamo. Bring my dog in my box. Ah, I'm just... Shut up, fatty. Oh. I have a message, sir, from the opera ghost. Oh, God in heaven, you're all obsessed. So it turns out that this opera ghost, as we know of it, is demanding multiple things from the new managers of the opera, including to keep box 5 open in the stands, and even 20,000 francs from the managers. Have you ever heard of multitasking, old man? Jesus! Think of me, think of me fondly when we've said goodbye. Remember me once in a while, please promise me you'll try and you'll find that once again. Oh god, that look though. You know that she wants to be intimidating. Now, right here, we just got a bunch of singy, 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 songy, songy, epic transition! That's more on musicy, musicy, yeah, singy, singy. Later in the movie, we find Rawl inviting Christine to dinner, following her to her room. Major stalker. But unfortunately, due to this angel music, she doesn't agree. I'm Batman. Clean upon aisle four. Ignorant fool, this brave young suitor, sharing in my triumph. So, after Christine goes out with the uh, intercom, she eventually meets this Phantom of the Opera face to face. Look at your face in the mirror, I am there. He got the damsel in distress face down. Come to the angel of music. Who's that voice? Who is that in there? I'm Batman. Come to the angel of music. So where are we going? Narnia. Okay. So the Phantom leads Christine into this underground lair, which none of the contractors knew even existed. Which I'd say none of these things even exist in a real opera house. I have you to the Batcave. Man, if it's that easy to get a girlfriend, why don't I have one? Let your soul take you where you to be. You mean like on YouTube? But before our phantom friend can reach maximum creepiness, Christine passes out when she sees her own wedding dress. Way to plan ahead, man. Way to plan ahead. 